All right, brake bleeding apparatus uh, connected. So uh, I'm gonna show you how this guy works. So basically, you gotta hook it up to the air compressor here. Oh, yeah, I can't do that with a man, but anyway, it, um, it uh it works by like kind of um, a venturi effect, um, or kind of like how a carburetor works, sort of kind of. Um, the air goes over the um, the reservoir here, and it creates a vacuum, and it starts sucking the fluid out. It's gonna suck the fluid out from there, and then uh, dump it in here, and then that's pretty much it, you know. So, uh, so yeah, basically you squeeze the squeeze the handle, and then it just starts sucking the, the fluid out. So I'm gonna try to get at least the whole reservoir through, and then we'll put some fresh fluid in. Uh, the fluid is pretty fresh. Um, yeah. So. Alright, see how it works. Alright, check it out. Uh, yeah, turn it on first. So, you know, the weird thing is, um, this, the bleeder nipple, is, uh, is an 8 mil on this side, whereas on the other side it was a 10 mil. I, I, I don't know. I don't know why it's like that. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. It's a different bleeder nipple on it, I guess. Cool. Get some speed leaders or something, I don't know. Ah, there we go. Took quite a bit of force to get it open. So yeah, no working. I don't see any fluid coming out. Um oh wait, there's some fluid coming out now. Make sure you don't run out of brake wood. <laughs> uh, we still got a little bit in there. Sort of, kind of. Alright, yeah, so I'm gonna keep that up for a little while and then we're gonna go to, uh, gonna go to the, uh, the vacuum pump, the good old vacuum pump. Where did it go? Right there. And I'm gonna go use that guy after. Alright. Um, all done with this side. Um, so I'm gonna go bleed the other side a little bit just in case some air got in there. And uh, I think we should be good. Put the wheel back on. So this one actually came with the brake bleeder nipple cover. That's nice. Um, actually, well, it was on the old rotor, uh, old caliper, so I'll have to get another cover for the other side. I have a bunch of vacuum caps at my other house, so. Um, yeah, looks good. Um, I stepped on the brakes and, um, they're pretty, they're pretty stiff. It's a little bit spongy, but I think that's the way it's supposed to be, I guess. Sort of, kind of, maybe. So, uh, yeah, it's like rock hard when it's, uh, when there's no, uh, uh, what is it, when there's no, wow, the rotor's not moving at all. It's not good. It's supposed to move still. <laughs> Oh, it moves, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, it moves. Alright, so, uh, so yeah, that's the plan. Uh, put the wheel back on, take the other wheel off, and then, uh, we'll, um, I'll, I'll bleed the other one just, just a little bit, maybe like three times with the, with the vacuum pump, and then, um, put the wheel back on, and then take it for a spin, and now uh, we'll be done with the front. Oops, so yeah, I got the wheel back on and then uh, I realized, oh, I didn't torque the um, the guide pins or the caliper bracket. I just tightened them. So uh, yeah, time to torque it. So it's 70 for the guide pins. No, 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 no. It's 70 for the um, the caliper bracket and then seven, and 50 for the guide pins. All right, everything's back on there. Time to go for a test ride. So yeah, like, like I said, the... The fuel filler thing is still leaking. It well, I mean, it's still cracked, but I I, I fixed it sorta, kinda, <laughs> temporarily. So I'm just gonna take a you know, nice little uh, drive around the block and um, try to brake as much as possible. You know, not hard brake, but 
do some light braking. Uh, yeah, because I don't want that fuel to be sloshing all over the place. All right, let's go for a test ride. And then uh, I'll probably just pull the car back in and then start on the back. Um, I don't know, what time is it? It's about 11 o'clock. I wonder how long it'll take to just swap some rotors and pads. I don't think it'd be that hard. And I could bleed it. And I could close the garage if it's too noisy. But... <laughs> Man, those, uh, those uh, new calipers really stand out. They're really uh, silvery. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go test the temp right here. Got about 90, 97 on the side that I just did. This one could be about 90, about 100, I guess. 100. 110. Wow, this one's hotter. Okay, it's not hotter by a lot, but this one should be about 100. It seems a little too cool. It's about a hundred. This one is hot again. Oh. Yeah, oh, it's a little warmer. Alright, cool. How about uh Alright, so yeah, what I did is I drove it around the block and I, I put it instead of like Letting the engine do the braking, I put it in neutral, and then I gave it some brakes. And I stopped a couple times, so I'm going to do the All same right, thing. Brake test number two. One, two, three, seven, about 170. And one, what was it? The other one was 136, 140. It's good. It's good. This one's a little bit hotter, I guess. It could be that uh, these ones, I, I drove around yesterday and like uh, they're, the pads are, are, uh, are starting to bed a little bit. So, um, but yeah, man, I drove it and uh, I drove it and it was awesome. Uh, it, it bites now. <laughs> It did not it didn't bite so hard last time. I, I mean, with the with the brakes that came with the car, it did not bite very good. So I'm I'm assuming the reason the brakes sucked on this car is because only one of the calipers was doing the work. Yeah. So um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know which one of the calipers is doing most of the work. Uh, I mean, it's like a it's like a one quarter of the pistons weren't working. That's basically it, you know. So yeah. Um, well, it's okay. New, brand new brakes. So, but yeah, it, it bites. It bites hard now, and they haven't even broken in yet. So, I good job. So there we go. Front's done. Now I got to do the rear. Uh, I think I'm gonna go have dinner first, and then uh, then we'll get on it. All right, here's my guy.